Recording in progress. All right, welcome Sabrina and Natasha. We're gonna begin right away with questions in the room. It's cold. We're gonna go second row center. Hakeem Bale of BeyondTheW.com. Once again, uh, congratulations, uh, you know, for, for making All-Star, absolutely. I want to start with, uh, with one uh, for you, Sabrina. Um, in a lot of ways, you know, you've gotten that New York experience. Chicago, in a way, has been compared, I guess you can say, to a baby New York. How has it been, like, sort of getting that, you know, experience, especially, you know, you know first, first All-Star here, and how would you compare it to what you've been able to experience, you know, you know playing in New York City? Um, well, I haven't, you know, spent too much time here, but um, it's the city's amazing just fr from the time that I have spent here. Um, I feel like they welcome athletes with, you know, open arms and um, just being able to be here in this venue and hearing about how many fans are coming to the game, it being sold out. I think it just speaks volume about this city and um, how much that they value women's basketball here. Jack, Jackie, go ahead. Hi, all. Uh, good to see you. So, um, Sabrina, first for you, just generally, what does being an all-star this year mean for the general uh, story arc of your career? Yeah, um, I'm honored to be here. I'm honored to be um, recognized amongst some of the best players in the world and in history, um, being alongside, like, even some of my teammates, Candace Parker, Sylvia, um, a lot of these players, I'm, I just feel like I'm a little kid looking up to them and um, excited to be here. So I'm really taking this um, and just soaking it all in. I don't think I'll really, really be able to kind of sit back and appreciate everything until the season's over because we're still in the middle of the season. But while I'm here, I'm just trying to be present and be where my feet are and really just enjoy everything that this weekend has to offer. I appreciate that. Uh, Natasha, for you, can you take us through sort of what the um, the New York Liberty bandwagon looks like? I mean, I think the mascot has arrived. You know, what teammates, what family members, like here, who is here to support both you and Sabrina? If you can shed some light on that. Uh, you know, like our friends, our family, our fans uh, came out to, you know, to support us. Uh, we also have fans in Chicago, too, that we didn't even know. Um, so it's really good to actually have that support that from uh, New York all the way in Chicago too to, to uh, support us. And last one uh, for either one of you. So obviously you were at the premiere of the Tribeca Film Festival documentary Unfinished Business and there was a Joan Jett part in there. And um, I asked NECA earlier, I said to her, Joan Jett was this really passionate fan and she sat with a voodoo doll and I said to her, so where are the Joan Jets now? So that's what I would like to know from the two of you. You know, that passion existed in the early thousands. How can we get it back? Oh, I thought you were actually asking. I was like, I don't know where they're at right now. No, 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 no. <laughs> like, metaphorically. Got it. <laughs> Got it. Um, I think personally, um, now that they're now that we're allowed to have more fans in arenas, and now that kind of basketball is back and the world is back, I think we're starting to see it more. Um, I know for us, it's like every city we're traveling to, there's people with autographs waiting to sign, whether it's at the airport or hotels, and um, it's slowly coming back. And I think being able to have this event here um, with Nike Nationals going on is absolutely amazing. Um, I played in the EYBL, and so being able to have this event here around thousands of high school um, basketball players that are aspiring to be like us one day and are able to come and watch the game and a, few, a few of them are able to be in the skills challenge is something that you know they're never going to be able to do again and is very very amazing so um, I think it's just starting and we have to continue to do our part and and uh, give back to the to the other generations next question uh, front row center hey Nick Hamilton Nightcast media this question is for Sabrina um, 
when you talk about the just the exposure of the W as far as the fan bases and growing that fan base, what do you feel like the league has to do more of as far as expanding those fan bases and being more visible on television, and not just dealing with apps and also marketing athletes more like yourself and others as far as, you know, from an apparel standpoint, shoes and things of that nature in order to grow this game? Yeah, I think you kind of nailed a few of them, but I think uh, marketability is huge, whether it's on an individual base or a team base, um, continuing to brand, you know, brand partnerships and continue to do that um, on both levels. But also, I think just visibility. Um, obviously, this is a huge one with being able to do it here in Chicago, um, where the fan base is for basketball is huge. And also, like I, I mentioned, the UIBL is here. But I also think just figuring out ways to continue to find um, a lot of these players to be able to stay in market and not have to go overseas in the off season is huge. I know every year it seems like more and more players are staying here and wanting to find um, opportunities, whether it's in market or on an individual basis, to be able to stay here and um, kind of use their platforms to, um, you know, find ways to make money or find ways to give back and whatever it is that they're wanting to do. And I think that's really important because visibility is huge, whether that's on TV or in your community. Uh, staying on the left for our next two questions to your left third row. Hi, Remy with the New York Times. Um, just to kind of piggyback back off of that, how would you guys describe this era for the W? You know, you kind of you have all these eyeballs on the sport, kind of moving into a, a new chapter. Like, how, talk a little bit about that. It feels new and refreshing. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of players. I think the page is kind of, of turning. There's a lot of young players that have entered the league and have been in the league that are really starting to blossom and make a name for themselves, um, which is really exciting. And then there's a lot of veteran players that are also now um, having access to, you know, use their brand and, and use their likeness to be able to um, continue to provide for themselves, for their families, and, and for their business, which is huge, because that wasn't the case, you know, 10, 15 years ago when a lot of these players that are here now enter the league. So it's a new wave, and it's and it's starting at a younger age. You know, it's starting in college now where players are able to make money, and so I think it's, it's changing, and it's changing in the right direction. Uh, staying on the left in the last row. Hi, Charlotte Carroll from The Athletic. This question is for Sabrina. Sabrina, how have you seen your game grow and change the most over the this season, just given that it's your first real healthy one? Yeah, it's been exciting. Um, it, it's been different, just you know, finally being healthy, and um, I haven't I haven't been trapped, you know, since since college really, because I haven't been healthy enough to really demand that type of um, defense. And so, as a team, I think we've all really um, started to figure out. You know, ways to adapt to different defenses. Tosh is playing at an amazing level. You know, obviously an all-star, and so um, teams are now having to adapt to what she's doing. And so I think just on a team basis, we're figuring out ways to continue to use our strengths. And um, yeah, for me, I'm just trying to continue to learn. Um, you know, whether it's defense or offensively, ways that I can continue to improve and get better now that I'm able to. Uh, and fourth, next question, fourth row in, row in the center. This is Erica Ayala reporting for the New York Times. Tasha, I wanted to come to you. I know that you've, this is, you've been to an all-star uh, event before and have been in the league, and I heard Sabrina talking about the opportunity that exists with Nike Nationals here and other opportunities. What have you seen as the, the best opportunities throughout your WNBA playing to, career to engage with other people in the basketball community? Is it all-star? Is it finals? Like, what does that look like from your perspective? Uh... It looks like, you know, just uh, getting connected with some of the great players, you know, get the insight of what they think and, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, you just get, like, they pick it back on uh, things of what they're going to do after they retire or, like, you know, what's the next step or anything that you want to put in your game or, off like, off the floor. First row to your right. AJ McCord, the Oregonian. Sabrina, I know that you've talked about this being your first season, being healthy, and this all-star being such a culmination of feeling like for the first time in the pros you can play like you played at Oregon. Well, how big of an impact has Candace Parker had in encouraging you to take care of yourself so that you can get to this point? Yeah, she's been amazing. Um, I've looked up to her ever since I got into the league and um, have gotten, you know, closer with her through these last two years but um, she's experienced she's veteran she's gone through injuries and so you know being able to talk to her I think 
it was last year on the free throw line, actually. She just told me, like, take care of your body. She had someone that I could go see. And um, to just be able to have someone like that in the league is huge um, because at the end of the day, it's we're all competing for spots. We're all competing to try and be the best. And um, sometimes you lose sight of things on a human level and what people are going through. And I don't think a lot of people really understood what I was going through, and I didn't really talk about it either. And so to just be able to kind of have – someone come up to me like Candace Parker and, and talk to me was, you know, something that I'll never forget. And I think it speaks on our relationship now. What game was that? That she talked to you on the free throw line? What game was that? Um, when they, it was last year when they came um, to New York. Yeah. Uh, next question to your left in the second row. Hey, Sabrina. Hey, Tosh. Miles are like one sider. Tosh, this is your second time here at Sabrina's first. What insight were you able to give her for her first All-Star appearance? Uh, just take it all in. Just have fun. Uh, enjoy every moment of it. Uh, next question, we're going to go to Zoom. Christos, if you would. Uh, hello, ladies. Hope you're doing well, first of all. Congratulations to be there. Sabrina, in this season with multiple tribute levels, Person uh, All Star selection. How, what does it mean for you to be there after such a productive season? And how is it back on your mind to to win the MVP All Star Game MVP trophy? Yeah, I'm excited to be here. Um, I'm not really worried about any of that stuff. I I really just um, want to just soak it all in. Um, I want our team to win. That's really what's what's most important. But it's been exciting. I, I wasn't sure what to expect. I wasn't even sure if I was going to be an all-star. And so um, kind of hearing that I was starting and going to be here um, still doesn't even really feel real. So I'm happy to be here. I'm super thankful to my teammates, my coaches, um, everyone that ha has given me the ability and believed in me to be here, and um, my family and my whole support system that has helped me get through um, the ups and downs. and. Um, I think we're both just really excited to be here. This opportunity doesn't come around often and um, isn't really easy to get to. And so um, always really honored and, and happy to be here. All right, we have time for two more questions. We're going to go first to Pepper and then to Ethan. Pepper, go ahead. Hi, Serena. Hi, Natasha. Congrats to you both on being All-Stars. I'm sure you both know about the four-pointer in tomorrow's game. I know, Serena, you drain threes that sometimes should be worth four points. How do you both plan to take advantage of that? Me, uh, every chance I get, I'm going to try to shoot, shoot, shoot a four-pointer. Uh, four so I'm just going to just have fun out there and just try to at least I make one. So Hopefully I'll make one. <laughs> Our last question will come from Ethan. Ethan, go ahead. Ethan Lee Chalk here, all the way from Australia. Tomorrow's game will have three special rules. No free throws, a 20-second shot clock, and a four-point shot. If one of these rules had to stay for the remainder of the season, which would you choose? Four-point four point. shot. <laughs> all right, Ethan, any follow-up? All right, Sabrina, Natasha, thank you.